Hi friends and welcome. This is Barb Pask. I'm going to do a little still life for you tonight. I'll, I'll spin you around in a moment and show you what, what I have set up. I also I want to share some good news with you first. <clears throat> I am um, been kind of in the mood to do a workshop. It's been a while since I've done one and uh, of course with the year that we've all had, you know, we haven't left the house much. So I uh, I have a DVD that I bought a while back that I did mention to you when I first got it by Shelby Keefe. And this is painting from photographs. There's her painting. Uh, when I bought it several months ago, I watched it. I really enjoyed it. And I took it with me recently again. Uh, we went camping and I took it along and watched it. I thought, boy, you know, I would really be interested in probably doing a workshop with her. So I did a little homework and I found out she was offering a couple workshops this year. So in October, the beginning of October, we are going to Wisconsin, my husband and I, to take a workshop, a four-day workshop with, with Shelby. And it's, uh, this is basically the subject of the workshop, painting from photographs. So uh, I'm very excited. We rented a place right next door to the school so I can walk over when I'm done for the day. Um, she's a, sometimes can be a little bit looser than I am. We, you start out and tone your canvas with uh, bright acrylics. So I need to pick up a few colors of acrylics. But uh, basic, a basic palette pretty much like I work with, a pretty much limited palette. And uh, she's so good with color, which is one of the things you know, I want to learn from her. She has a lot of plein air experience, and in my opinion, to do really, you may not agree with that, but I think it helps to paint from photographs if you have that plein air background. Um, she's good about, like I said, she'll see a little color and she just runs with it. She's very good about that. So, again, it's a long way off, so, um, but when I do, you know, get back from it, of course, I'll share with you anything I can. I'm always happy to do that. Okay, tell you what we're doing tonight. We are doing, this is a square six by six inch canvas. Oh, I kind of hate to move you because it's so hard to get you back. I have a still life set up over here. Of a cup with some tea in it and some fresh strawberries. I tried the spoon, I decided not to put the spoon in. So we're kind of looking down over the setup. Um, you can see I have it lit, so we get some nice shadows. So I think it, it just looks fun. So we'll see how it goes. Um, hopefully this angle is okay for you. I know. All right, this is what we're doing. So I could tone the canvas. We could start that way. Um, I could take a pencil and sketch it on, but I think we'll just uh, sketch it on with some paint. Just mix up something dark here and sketch it on. I looked through the view catcher, which it, I just opened it wide open for a square format like this. And again, we're kind of looking down at it, and I really like the shadows. <clears throat> so. I'm thinking the little uh, kind of using straight lines as you can see to kind of sketch that in. Look down how, how down far from the top the T is. Maybe something like that. We're looking down in it. And uh, and we can see the little handle. Hope I don't bump you around. You are literally bumping my wrist with the edge of this thing on this tripod. And we can, I can look at the hole. That's always helpful to get the, the shape of this. Look at the negative space that I'm seeing in there. Get a little more 
water on this. This is called an ellipse, the uh, edge of a container. trying to see how much space I see here like that if you've got a subject you'd be interested in painting you know I'm not saying I'll definitely do it but I'd definitely be open to considering that I try to do a variety of things and I like to paint as you know I like everything I went out and painted out on Monday. It was a beautiful day here. It's a great experience when the weather is just right, and it was just wonderful. Painted up in the town where I lived, painted a, um, a row of some really sweet houses. Again, we got a great shadow here. And the shadow under the handle. Interesting shadows can be such an important part of a painting. Shadow out here. And then we got another strawberry here with greenery. digging around a night years ago when my uh, husband's aunt died we uh, moved his uncle out of the house eventually and I got to go in there and clean out their linen closet and I have all these wonderful old vintage tablecloths you know wonderful old patterns like from the 50s um, I've used them some probably not enough I'm looking again at this see how that feels This strawberry is um, like bumping the edge of it, of the uh, cup. And again, we've got our nice little shadows, which I really like. I've got a green tablecloth under it, very pale green. And this is green too, but it's a different kind of green, a blue green. Working in water mixable oils. If you're not familiar with that, their water cleanup, that's really the, for me, that's really the only big difference I see between traditional oils. Bear with me, I'm in a kind of awkward position tonight because I got my subject to the left of me. You can see okay, I think. Okay, so let's start um, with the cup. I think I'll pre mix some color. I'm going to. It's kind of a, a blue-green, so I'm going to take some cobalt and yellow and white. Of course, as it rolls down over the front, it's much darker. And I'm looking, I, I even see some red which is nice reflected in there and maybe a little bit over here from this berry. So, uh, and like I said, I did pour some tea into it. A raspberry tea, so it's got kind of a, a red kind of color to it and some of it's darker. So this area is catching a lot of light. This is darker over here as it gets away from the light. And the rim is nice and light. 
like I said, down in here, squint and look, this area is lighter than here, but not as dark as here. So, try to observe and try to get what we see. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to work with a fairly big brush like I always do if I can. I try to work big as long as I'm comfortable with it. Like I said, this area is not catching any light, so it's much darker. here. There's a gal I've mentioned her before, um, Monica Ockberger. She's a Cincinnati artist and uh, I've, I've mentioned her before. She's what I would consider a colorist. Her her paintings just stand out when you see them because of her use of color. Just really beautiful. Well, she recently put on a picture of a, an old rusty bridge that she had painted. I don't know if she did it on location or not. It doesn't matter. But even a subject like that where I might, and I painted covered bridges and things before, you wouldn't believe there were a variety of colors that she had in that rusty bridge. I mean, purples and warms and cools and, you know, it, it won an award and not surprising. I mean, again, her use of color. Did she see all that color? Maybe, maybe not. It doesn't matter. I mean, it's your painting. Um, but she sure made it an interesting painting by doing that. Actually, taking a little red because I do see some red in there from these berries, I guess. Now I'm looking down at the T. This area is darker over here, which would make sense because it's not catching as much light. I'm just blocking in what I see, trying to, you know, and, you know, we may have to, like, do some blending, blend these colors together so they transition nice. But I'm not doing a lot of that at this point. Now, the whole edge is pretty light. Over in here, there's actually, um, there's a few areas that are brighter, but, uh, rain most of today here. Some people do wonderful paintings of um, stacks of cups. They just stack a whole bunch of cups. Um, Carol Marine is one that does that really well. If you want to check her out, 
I'm always dropping names, aren't I? It's good to know artists, though. My uh, The one group, well, I'm not painting with them now, but we spent a year, we would take turns and we would introduce living artists. We took, you know, because there's so many wonderful living artists that we should be aware of. Ooh, hot in here. I may have to peel off my jacket. And then this little area here is catching light. Shelly and her DVD, she sketches, she spends a long time sketching, and she uh, sketches in a dark paint, and uh, sometimes she'll leave that dark here and there, which is, it looks really nice. Bear with me a second here. I'm going to, I got too many clothes on here. Shirt and a jacket and an apron. Whew, too much. Sorry if I'm messing you up with the sound. I'm probably jostling that microphone around. Okay, that's better. So I'm having fun. I don't know if you're enjoying this subject, but uh, like I said, we've got some highlights on there too that I don't have in yet. But and then of course it's very dark down here at the base. So let's move on. Trying to see if I think I have my proportions right here. This might come down a little more. All right, let's move on to the strawberries. Fun, fun, fun. Of course, the area that's in the light is a nice juicy red, really almost a cad red light. And then uh, the part that's down there, we'll throw some uh, ultramarine in the part that's shaded so we can get it much darker. Maybe some crimson too keep it in the red family that way, but darker. So let's put in the darkest part we see first. Like I said, this half of this is in the... is shaded. This part down here is shaded. Our I may have mentioned this before, but this is our year for 17-year cicadas, and they um, are due out very soon, within a few days. So, uh, <laughs> you know, we have plans to camp this year. My daughter sent me a little diagram. They're, they're going to be terrible here where we are, and uh, Indiana, the whole state of Indiana is covered. So we're going to have to go east or south or, I don't know, northeast or, <laughs> I really hate them. When they were here 17 years ago, we weren't living in this area. We were over in Hocking Hills, Ohio, and uh, we didn't have them much over there, but the last two, let's see, so that'd be, oh God, I even hate to say that, 34 years ago, I do remember them then. My daughter was small, and they were, she was catching them in jars, they were just everywhere. They're just creepy. They, uh, harmless, but you know, they, they like to land on you, and they're noisy, and I, I said, <laughs> I have two grandsons that are almost 17, and I was saying to the, my one daughter, did you tell him about the cicadas? Did, she said, I have tried to explain it to him. She said, I think he, he doesn't have any idea what's coming. 
it, you, know, you know, they may not bother him. I had a friend that says she loves them. I looked up the website someone gave me, and uh, apparently there are people that uh, kind of follow them. They show up in areas where they're due to hatch, so there are people that like them. Got a green, green stems at the top. You know, and you could do these just as juicy as you wanted. The big, thick, heavy paint would be fun, you know. You know, and strawberries have some of those little seeds. Not seeing a lot of that. Uh, but we'll see. All right, so let's make a green. Ultramarine. We'll do some Indian yellow, which makes a very dark, transparent green. We'll start with the dark green, and then we'll come back and lighten it up. Boy, you are just right here. I'm working around this little thing and bumping into you. This one's mostly light. It's shooting right into the light. So then let's throw some um, cow gel and medium into this mixture. Lighten it up some. This one isn't catching, the stem isn't catching much light. You know, and I don't know if you set up your own still lives, but one advantage of setting up your own still lives, even if you photograph it, is to, you know, play around with light effects. You could, I mean, you really could do some cool things. You know, and there's a chance we'll have to clean these up too because um, we got a paint in the background, so. So this guy is really touching the touching the cup. All right, let's put in some of these shadows that we see. Oh, I got paint all over myself. How long did that take? Let's see. <laughs> uh. One thing nice about water cleanup, I just dipped my little paper towel in the water. I'm trying to wipe it off. I'm not putting solvent on my hands. I use baby wipes too. When I go out to plein air paint, I carry a pack of baby wipes. They work pretty good for cleaning up your hands. All right, so the background is a green. Again, a different green than the cup. Um, but let's put some, let's mix up something for a background here. And first thing will be the shadows that we'll put in. So I'm going to start out um, with some red and blue, make a purple, okay.
like I said, right up, I've got some really dark shadows too we'll have to put in. I'm going to put a touch of water on this so I can get this to move around a little bit better. That's one thing about that workshop. She calls for um, a medium, and I don't normally use a medium, but I will probably buy some because she wants us to have it. And maybe I'll learn to like it. I don't know. They make that solvent gel solvent free gel I probably get some of that I think you can use that with traditional oils or water mixable oils and I, I don't know how this feels to you I'm not saying I'm getting this right I'm just blocking it in for now kind of hazy but that could be the handle that we're seeing and then um, we could come back and do this later but I'm going to uh, mix up something very dark like it's very dark right up at the edge and very dark under the handle there. All right, I'm going to clean the brush for the first time before we do the background and I just clean it in water. I, I switch to these oils um, to work in a less toxic way because I do paint a lot and uh, when you work in traditional oils, for me anyway, I had a cup of solvent sitting right in front of me all the time. So I have a few autoimmune diseases already and I thought it might be a good change and I really love them. I don't have any problem with working with them. I actually started them because I was communicating with a very good artist named Mark Hansen and uh, he was having migraine headaches and stuff from from traditional oils and he was he switched to the Cobras which is what I use. Cobras. I could show you a tube here and um, we he was very generous. We talked back and forth trying to grab a tube to show you and um, the Cobra is what he was using and that's what he recommended. I ordered them from Dick Blick um, but I think they're a good quality brand and I think I've had people tell me they thought, I've mentioned this before, that they thought that the, uh, they were sticky and I, that has not been my experience and I think partly is because I use good ones. Playing around with colors here. There's a uh, few highlights we have to put on this cup that will hopefully help it stand out from the background too. And I wouldn't have to go green. I Purple would be pretty too. Okay, now let's look at the shape of this strawberry while we're here. Because we want it to feel like a strawberry. You know, when you paint a lot, you read a lot of different things over the years and I read one time if you were painting 
like a red object that they recommended you put the complement which is green in your shadows I don't know I'm just throwing that out there I think it can work nice to put these are kind of a red color these shadows anyway and I think that works kind of nice because then I think it feels like the intensity of the red is bleeding down onto the surface Now, do we want the same exact green everywhere? I mean, we can, I put a little more blue in it there. And if I toned this, you know, of course we could have had that tone peeking through. You know, and over here where the light is more intense, you know, we can we could even get lighter and heavier. We could put more yellow in that area. You know, whatever. I did a video last night that I uh, had intentions of posting, but I just, I, I bought an old camera and I, uh, I just didn't love the painting. I didn't post it. I've painted it a couple times so far already. If you follow me on Facebook, I posted uh, one of the paintings I did, not the one from last night. I keep trying different positions. It's one of those with the uh, lens that kind of accordions out. So it's probably from the, it's an old camera. Very cool. just painted you oops sorry see that's how close you are to me If you notice, this shadow is more purple and I've got more red in those, which I like because, again, that's the shadow for the strawberries. I am really crowded here. All right, let's do some looking at this now. Of course, we need some highlights. Picked up a little of that red, which I don't mind, you know. And some pure cad red light because how often do you get to use it like that you know putting some of it on these berries a little heavier I like this area here but it's really too bright really all right I'm going to have to reach across you and get a liner brush here.
I might have mentioned before when I'm doing a plein air competition in May. I don't think I thought that out real good when I signed up because, again, the cicadas will be out, so I don't know. I saw a thing on the news today. This guy is selling where you can just, um, you put it over top of you, and it, it's like a net thing. But it seems to me, that's why I was saying to my husband, that they could get into the bottom of it and climb up inside it with you. I'm telling you, that'd be worse. I'd freak out, so. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's the answer. Just looking real careful at my proportions here. See how things look. You know, and if you were, were a realist, you would, you know, put every little seed in those strawberries. You know, I'm not, I'm not right on them, but I'm not seeing that. I'm just seeing little dabs of reflection and. Just want to make sure they feel like strawberries. That's obviously a big one. I'll put a little more red in the shadows, I guess. Let's try that. see a few reflections. The longer you look when you're doing this stuff, the more you see. It's that way outside too. And I see, well that's a hunk in it. We might have to, and one down there which is good because that explains. Let's take some of that off. That's a little heavy handed. I see it down in there. I don't know how that works. Now, you know, you could do whatever you wanted here. You, you know me, I like phthalo. Do I see any of it in there? No. But. It's pretty, and uh, I'm introducing a little bit of it because I like it. Now, let's look at the front of this and see if we want to blend it. I'm sorry, I'm literally running into you, aren't I?
don't think that makes sense in there. And I'm getting, I'm trying just a little bit of color that's a little more orangey, just for a little accent here and there. Not bad. I think we'll go ahead and sign it. Maybe. Might be too wet. Having trouble getting it to stick on there. I have an easy name. Please like and subscribe if you haven't. Like I said, we're going to have a giveaway when we reach a thousand subscribers. All right, that may stay, it may not. I'll get up and show it to you. Um, Looking at it myself here, seeing if I'm happy with it. I feel like the um, the rim of the cup. I feel as though it could be lighter, but again, see how wet it is. We may have to come back and brighten that up once. Um, this all sets up a little bit, but we can do that. That's an easy fix. All right, get up and show it to you. This is only 45 minutes. That's pretty quick, isn't it? Again, it's a six by six. There it is. And I've done, you know, green cup on green, green background. That we may or, you know, may not stay that way. I like the look of the negative painting here. And the shadow's interesting. Like I said, I may need to brighten up the edge of that cup once it dries a little bit. There it is. I'll show you the subject again. Crank you down. So I'm looking at the cup, thinking it might need a little adjustment, even too. Maybe, but uh, I feel like this rim might need to come out a little bit. So I will take a, a good look at it, and uh, but it's mostly there. And I hope you enjoyed watching. And uh, again, like and subscribe. And thank you for taking time to join me and watch for me next time. Good night.